Hello everyone, Mr. Chantry here, your Neighborhood Planetarium Director, with the December 2020 edition of Evening Sky Excursions, where I show you what's up in the sky this month. December hosts the shortest day of the year, with the winter solstice on the 21st. The shortest day of the year also means the longest at night, and it's a good thing too, because there's two nighttime events that you will want plenty of time to catch. The best meteor shower of the year, the Geminids, will show up mid-month. Then, on the winter solstice, Jupiter and Saturn will have their greatest conjunction since 1623. Let's start with the Geminid meteor shower and these topics. What is a meteor? To answer this, we need to talk about the difference between three words that often get confused, meteor, meteoroid, and meteorite. A meteor, sometimes called a shooting star, is the light produced in Earth's atmosphere when a meteoroid hits it at really fast speeds and heats up the air so much that it glows. A meteoroid is a small piece of ice or rock in space. These are typically about the size of a grain of sand or dust, up to about the size of a small boulder, about a meter across. Lastly, a meteorite is what can be found if a meteoroid makes it all the way through the Earth's atmosphere without completely burning up from the heat and makes it to the ground. So what is a meteor shower? A meteoroid can hit the Earth's atmosphere at any random time, and you might happen to see a meteor in the sky. But these random events are not predictable. You could sit outside on any night and stare at the sky and maybe see one, a few, or no meteors at all. But there are about 10 times a year when astronomers know the Earth will encounter many meteoroids for about a week, and you can expect to see many meteors in a night. Why do meteor showers happen? We know the Earth revolves or goes around the Sun, but there are objects like other planets, comets, and asteroids that also go around the Sun. When comets and sometimes asteroids go around the Sun, they leave trails of dust rock, and ice that have broken off of them all around their orbits. When the Earth goes through the orbit of one of these objects, we run into all of the cosmic debris. And voila, a meteor shower. The Earth is moving around the Sun at about 67,000 miles per hour, and meteoroids are also traveling around the Sun. When they collide, these particles hit the Earth anywhere from 25,000 to 160,000 miles per hour. That's so fast that the air or atmosphere in front of that meteoroid gets squeezed and heated up so much that the air starts to glow. That is the light or meteor you will see in the sky. The Gemini meteor shower is unique because it comes from the cosmic debris left from an asteroid, not a comet like most meteor showers. This shower is from the debris of asteroid 3200 Theoten. Now that we know what a meteor is and why meteor showers happen, what can you expect to see? Well, don't expect to go out and see meteors like fireworks in the sky for a few minutes, then head back inside. This is not how meteor showers work. The Geminids is one of the best meteor showers of the year. And in perfectly dark skies, you may see up to 100 meteors per hour on average. In more light polluted areas like where we live, that number will go down, but you should be able to catch one every few minutes. This year, we are in luck because the moon will be in its new phase as the shower peaks on the 13th and 14th of the month and won't block out some of the fainter meteors. When and where can I see the Geminid meteor shower? The Earth will be moving through the orbit of asteroid 3200 Theoten from about the 10th of December until the 17th, and you may catch some of the meteors on any of those nights. But the night that we go through the largest concentration of debris will happen around the 13th and 14th of the month. The best night to go out will be on the evening of the 13th into the morning of the 14th. 
Since these meteor showers happen because the Earth is going through the orbit of another object, you are most likely to see the most meteors between midnight and sunrise. As the Earth goes around the Sun, you are looking to where the Earth is going after midnight and in the early morning. That is when many of the particles will be running into the Earth. This does not mean that you won't see any before midnight, but meteors will happen less frequently. This shower is called the Geminid Shower because the meteors will generally appear to come from the region of the sky where you find the constellation Gemini. To locate the constellation Gemini, it is best to first look for Orion the Hunter and the three bright stars that make up his belt. Down and to the right of the belt is a bright whitish blue star named Rigel, and up and to the left of the belt is a bright reddish star called Betelgeuse. If you draw a line from Rigel through the belt to Betelgeuse and continue going straight, you will run into the two bright stars, Castor and Pollux, which are the heads of the twin brothers that make up the constellation Gemini. This is generally the direction you want to face when looking for meteors from the Geminid meteor shower. So, how should I prepare to be comfortable watching it? Be sure to dress warm and bring a warm blanket because it is December and you will be outside at night. Use an outdoor lounge chair to lay back so you can comfortably look about halfway up in the sky in the direction of the constellation Gemini. Make some hot chocolate or other warm drink to keep you nice and toasty. While patiently waiting for meteors, you may want to listen to some music or a podcast, have a conversation with a friend, or just enjoy the silence. If you're not into the whole sitting outside in December thing for a long time watching for meteors, there is an event to check out in the sky this month that only takes a few minutes to observe. This will be the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn on the 21st of December. The word conjunction actually means join together in Latin. If you remember from English class or Schoolhouse Rock, conjunctions such as and, but, or, join together words, clauses, or phrases. In astronomy, we use the term conjunction when two objects, such as planets or the moon, appear to join together or pass close by other planets, the moon, or stars in the sky. Regular conjunctions happen quite often, but go unnoticed by most people. When the two bright giant planets in our sky pass by each other, it's called a Great Conjunction. This year, the Great Conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn is special because the two planets will appear closer together in the sky than they have since 1623. All through the fall, we've been watching Jupiter and Saturn slowly get closer and closer in the evening sky. On December 21st, they will be at their closest to each other, appearing only one-tenth of a degree apart in the sky. To give you an idea of how close that is, the moon is about five-tenths of a degree across in the sky. So imagine one-fifth the width of the moon in the sky. Now remember, when dealing with the sky, looks can often be deceiving. Although Jupiter and Saturn will appear very close together, they are still separated in space by almost 400 million miles. They only appear so close together in our nighttime sky, because as the planets revolve around the Sun, they do so in different amounts of time. The Earth, for example, takes about 365 rotations, or days, to complete one revolution around the Sun. This is what we call a year. Jupiter takes about 12 Earth years to make one revolution around the Sun, and Saturn revolves about once every 29 Earth years. About every 20 times that the Earth goes around the Sun, or every 20 years, Jupiter and Saturn will be at their closest points to each other in their orbits. From the Earth, looking out into space, they will appear to be right next to each other, even though they're separated by hundreds of millions of miles. 
To see the Great Conjunction on the night of the 21st, you'll need to go out just after sunset and look to the southwest, the direction where the sun just set. Look about 15 degrees above the horizon. This is about the distance between your pinky and pointer finger stretched out at arm's length. Jupiter and Saturn will appear almost as a single bright light in this direction. Be sure to get out early, because this particularly picturesque planetary pairing will set below the horizon by about 6.30. If you're unable to catch this conjunction on the 21st, these two planets will still be a magnificent sight the few days before and after the 21st. If you happen to catch the Great Conjunction on the 21st, you can also take a minute to celebrate the winter solstice. There isn't anything in particular to see in the sky that indicates the winter solstice, unless you've been accurately measuring the position of the sun for the weeks leading up to the solstice. In astronomical terms, the winter solstice marks the beginning of winter and is the shortest day of the year. Ever since the summer solstice, way back in June, the dates have been slowly but surely getting shorter and shorter. After December 21st, the days will once again begin getting longer by a few seconds each day. Ancient cultures, at least as far back as 5,000 years ago, recognized the regular cycle of the lengthening and shortening of the days throughout the year. They would carefully watch the sun at its highest point in the sky at noon slowly change from day to day. The position of the sun and the different constellations visible in the night sky would indicate when to plant crops, when certain animals would be best to hunt, and when to harvest and prepare for winter. The winter solstice was widely celebrated in most cultures since the dawn of civilization. In fact, many of the celebrations that are still observed today around this time of year can have their traditions traced back to the early winter solstice celebrations. This was a time of great joy as the sun would begin to get higher in the sky. The days would get longer and the long dark winter months would eventually end. The reason for this cycle of the sun appearing higher and lower in our skies and the seasonal change in daylight and weather is due to the fact that the earth has tilted about 23 and a half degrees. As the Earth revolves around the Sun, its north and south poles can appear to tilt towards or away from the Sun. As the North Pole tilts away from the Sun, here in the Northern Hemisphere we get less time in the Sun's light, and the light is less direct, causing an overall cooling of the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, the opposite is happening. They are getting more time in the Sun's light and more direct light, which causes them to have an overall warming. It is interesting to note that many of these ancient customs of celebrating the solstices are not seen in cultures around the equator. Here, the movement of the sun is not as obvious and does not cause dramatic shifts in the average day length or temperatures. There are also many great constellations to check out in the December skies that I don't have time to cover. If you would like to see more information on those, check out the Malin Planetarium website at www.methactin.org planetarium and look for this month's constellations under the What's in the Sky This Month tab. Also, look in the video description for links to downloadable December sky maps. Whether you spent hours outside waiting patiently for meteors around the 13th of the month, only brave the cold briefly for a glimpse of the Great Conjunction on the 21st, or celebrate the winter solstice peering through a window from the warmth of the indoors, don't forget to look up, be amazed, and most importantly, be excellent to each other.